and U.S. has been the biggest funder of family planning around the world. And contraceptives, having voluntary access to contraceptives for a woman means that she can time and space her births and her pregnancies, and it can help lead her out of a cycle of poverty. But when you put a zero in the family planning budget, you are the opposite of helpful. Mm. Have you had the opportunity to talk to him about this? I have. What was the response? Um, I think the response that I got uh, in person was different than the public action that was taken. And the action at the end of the day is how much money are you putting behind this? And so I was incredibly uh, disappointed to see that. And disappointed for the world, disappointed for women um, all over the world, and disappointed for families. We're, we're going to lock families in a cycle of poverty for no reason. Uh, there's a big change going through the Western world now with the Me Too campaign, and mm -hmm. it has affected Sweden profoundly, mm -hmm. me personally, everyone personally, I think, too. And um, do you think you can use that power to, to affect the lives of women and children in other parts of the world as well? I think we have to use that power. And I think what you're hearing is a cacophony of voices from women saying, no more, mm -hmm. no more. Not in private, not because you are who you are. You can't do this. You shouldn't do this to women. And so to me, what is hopeful, as, as horrific as those stories are, is what's the hopeful piece is finally the light of day is happening. We're shedding light and we're causing transparency. And we know that one of the ways you get change in societies is when you have transparency and you have a multitude of people coming forward and saying, we're not going to tolerate this anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I am hopeful for what it will do. And I'm um, incredibly hopeful that I, because I see it not just in the US, but I see it spreading across Western Europe. And I'm actually looking forward to it going to other places like India and Africa, where much of the same thing is going on. This change or the voices sort of came through because so many people, so many women shared their stories. and and so many dare to be personal. And you have been personal in other mm -hmm. areas, like with the family planning, for example, talking about contraceptives. Was that a, a tough choice to make, to go to be that personal? On contraceptives, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and I had to speak to my children about it. Uh, Bill was behind me all the way. Uh, but I had to speak to my children about it. I had to speak to my parents about it, because I'm from a Catholic family. Um, and I knew it came with some risk. But I decided at the end of the day, if I believe in contraceptives and might counsel my children, I think you live your values out inside your family. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm counseling my children to use them and I'm counseling them about their bodies and respecting um, their bodies and other people's, that I needed to be public about that. Because if, we don't, if I don't tell my own story, um, then I can't be a credible spokesperson for that. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to hear that because I know I know you meet with the the presidents, the richest people, the most uh, uh, prominent scientists, and you know everyone that could possibly solve those problems. Do you ever get frustrated? Oh, I always get frustrated. I mean, I'm I as Bill and I say, we are impatient optimists. I I want the world to go faster. I want things to be better today for women. I want more women in political representation than we have in my own country, right? Um, I don't want women to not be able to get the tools to plan the births of their kids. So I get incredibly frustrated. But then again, I also have to remember that progress has happened. So when I sit these days at the UN and I think about the difference seven years ago when I used to go to the UN, seven years ago, um, no prime minister came in and talked about for his, and they are him in most countries, in Africa about educating and educating girls in their country. Now, they all come in and talk about educating their youth and educating girls. Girls weren't even on the agenda 10 years ago in global health. We didn't talk about adolescent girls. Now girls are not only on the agenda, they're squarely on the agenda. And same thing, women are on the agenda. So we are definitely making progress. And until you do that and you're serious about it and you collect data, then you start to invest, and I'm seeing the world invest. So I am optimistic mm. things will get better. Well, thank you for taking your time, and uh, you're a true role model and a great force in the world. Thank you. Mm. Thanks mm. for taking the time with me.